Holmes's pipe. Broken. I didn't notice it the last time. Today's newspaper. Mrs. Hudson must have left it early this morning. Baines's murder has made the front page. The news has spread quickly. The poor man shot at point-blank range. He had faith in Holmes right to the end, and it cost him his life. We think that we know the people around us, those who are close to us, who are part of our everyday lives, parents, colleagues, companions, friends. Then something unexpected happens, and it tears away the blinkers which we have chosen to wear. And it's at that precise moment that we finally see the true nature of those who always mattered the most to us. But in Holmes's case, what could have pushed the man, whom I have always considered as honest and loyal, to sink to such barbaric crimes and cold-blooded murder? I don't have the answer. But one thing is certain. Up until today, I had a friend. A noise, but it's coming from the flat, I'm sure. I think that I would rather not. Tell me the truth, Holmes. I need to know. You have no right to keep the truth from me. Tell me! I am sorry, Watson. Open this door, or I will break it down. Do what you like. The door is not locked. You've driven me to this. Open up! Why did it have to come to this, Holmes? All those years of friendship and respect, of trust, everything that we went through together, and you deceived me all along, damn you. I wish that I had seen through all of your lies, but now it is over. It is all over. After so many days of relentless investigations and sleepless nights, I returned to the Thames area, to the very place where the bishop's nephew had died. I only had one trail left to explore, one last desperate attempt to understand recent events. I descended into the putrid, dark, suffocating depths of the town, the sewers. The fresh breeze from the Thames gave way to the stale, dank air of the dark tunnels. A shadow moving through an underground labyrinth, tormented, wandering through this humid, oppressive purgatory. What I might find mattered little. The most important thing was to keep moving. Come on, John. Courage! Here's another. See how you like that. Oh, and how does this feel? Oh. <laughs> Don't think you like that much. <laughs> That'll teach him. Let's see if I can oh. break.
am so very glad to see you, Watson. had better watch out now. Grandpa's alive, and he is a good man. I knew that he was. Uh-oh, they're going to be sorry now. My grandpa rule. Yes, and my grandpa saved him. Read it. You are alive. I don't know what to feel, relief or regret. Watson, my friend. You are not in a good state, Holmes. Neither are you. I suppose not. Can you walk? Not without your help. Why did you fake your own death? And who were those men? I have to carry on with the investigation alone. John, I'm innocent. I'm not an accomplice of those men. Look at me. Do I look as though I could be their boss? Am I in a position to give such orders? What a relief! Oh, my God, what a relief! But how...? Curare, hemlock, a few Indian plants, and sheep's blood to create the impression of death. A pathologist who owed me a favor for the death certificate. Holmes, I was talking about this affair of... I will explain everything, my friend, but we must leave here. Yes, let's go back to Baker Street. I'll help you. Lean on me. Home at last. I have missed this old room very much, Watson. I put everything back in place after Baines went through it, but I didn't stay here. I couldn't face it. Sit down, my friend. It is time for you to know the full details of this case. First of all, I must apologize for the distress that this has caused you, and for my behavior, which was, I know, quite abominable. I can only hope that by the end of this explanation you will understand that I behaved in such a way only to protect you and that it caused me great pain to see your trust and confidence in me ebbing away. I don't know if my feelings could ever equal those of my friend. But as he walked off into the night, carrying that little girl in his arms, I confess that I had never seen him so moved. Holmes became the child's father. He gave her a gentle but exacting education. finally realized, thanks to this child, the simple happiness that life could bring, and also something that had previously always escaped him, love. <laughs>